Hello, Ochelo Kutepa is my name, and this is my beloved wife, Julia. Hello. We are so excited to be back on another episode of On the Couch Conversations. Uh, we had a great month of March, I mean, an array of subjects we considered, questions we answered, and we closed the month of March with the conversation on the farmer's wisdom, all right, for keeping a refreshed, beautiful, enjoyable marriage relationship. And we promised at the end of that video that we would talk about, you know, the things that a farmer has got to go through uh, and to, you know, the process of getting a bountiful harvest. So in this episode, what we really want to do is to look at, you know, planting and reaping love. So we're going to make a few points today and just make sure we're able to drive home the point. So today's episode is planting and reaping love. So we are still keeping to the farmer's wisdom. All right, but before we go too far in this video, I just want to ask, have you subscribed to this channel? If you are subscribed to this channel, have you encouraged anybody else to come here? Have you shared our videos? Have you invited a friend? Now, this is all necessary because we want to reach more people with the truth of God's word committed to us. And you can be a partner in that process. All right, so please do share and make sure that we are able to reach more people. So to today's episode, first point on planting and reaping love is that you must have a plan. Have a plan. Because there's no farmer who goes to farm without a plan. All right, because at the end of the day, before a farmer even gets uh, in the process of the active things of a farm, the farmer has a plan. Yes. What do you want to plant? Is it corn? Is it... Uh, no, they don't plant mango. <laughs> mango is a... Uh, is it perennial crop? They call this. Uh, no, okay, yes. You can have a mango plantation. Mm -hmm. That's even a plan. Aha, mm -hmm. uh -huh, because... For instance, if you want to have a mango plantation, that means you know that it's not a yearly thing. Yes. So, you see, the kind of love you want to plant and harvest will determine the kind of plan you have. Or your plan in itself will reveal. Okay? Um, I, I would like for you to talk about plan. For instance, as a single person, what kind of relationship or marriage did you have in mind? How did it affect your structuring, planning, and all of that? Yeah. Okay, before I say that, I just want to add this. When you have an idea of where you're going to, it helps inform the plan you make. For instance, if an architect is trying to build a mega structure, he won't be building a shallow uh, foundation. foundation. He will dig deep because he, he's having a plan to build a mega structure. So coming into this marriage, I had a plan to, to, to have a marriage that would last. I wasn't planning to marry for one year, two years. 10 years. This was a lifetime goal. So I was ready to find a person that would come on board that would have the same ideology, the same mindset that we are building for life, not a temporal uh, uh, situation. So I was looking for somebody with deep convictions that I also share. You know, and that's why the architect also has his joints before he ever gets to any building. If I, you know, they call it site plan, building plan. What are you doing? You're setting up a structure. In essence, to love effectively, to plant love and reap love, you need to have a picture, all right, of the outcome you desire. Because until you have a picture of the outcome you desire, when you get to the field, you may actually run out of steam. Yeah. Because there's no area of life where you will not encounter challenges. Mm -hmm. And of course, what makes you stand in the day of a challenge is the capacity to see beyond the challenge. And you know, one of the things that make you see beyond the challenge is the plan you have. So you have a mental picture of the kind of love relationship you want to have. That's why the farmer stands through the rain. That's why the farmer stands through the sun. That's why the farmer stands through every kind of season because there's a plan that he's got. All right? Yeah. So he, he doesn't come to that point where it looks like, uh-uh, uh, -uh, uh, -uh I, I, I did this, I did that. And that takes us to the number two point that you must understand the season. Mm -hmm. All right? It's the plan that makes you understand the season. Because the plan tells you this is the season to plant. This is the season to harvest. Because without a plan, you cannot discern seasons. Yeah. It's a plan that tells you, you know, you are not failing. The crop may not have shot. All right? Uh, let, let's, let's make this very practical before it looks like we're just talking to agricultural students. Okay? Let me, let me give you an example. You know, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 6.3 that there's a time to love, there's a time to hate, of course not you, uh, there's a time to be born, a time to die. 
You know, do you know there are seasons you come to in a love relationship where you're planting love and planting love, giving, you're the one giving. Some people come and sit with you in counseling. I'm always the one saying sorry. I'm always the one. I'm always the one. Don't judge it that way. There are a lot of things that if you understand the season, you know that it's a season to give. Because eventually what you are doing is you are getting your partner to that point where your partner is able to respond to your loving. That's what the Bible said that he loved us, so we now love him. That's what the Bible says, while we're yet sinners, Christ came and died. What did he do? He understood that it was a season to sow. Are, are you, you get. So, um, can you remember or think about any seasons where you had to do and do and do and wonder, am I the only one that would do and do and do in this marriage? Am I, am I the only one? Am I the only one? Particularly if you remember any incident or such situation that yielded fruit. Do you have such season? That you have to understand the season. I would give your example. Focus on them. Don't I, look at, I, you are looking at would, me too much. I would give your example. Why my example? You have your own example. Oh, yeah, use it. Okay. So when we got married. Um, Before we got married, I know where I'm going to. It's not about book reading or something. No. Not that one. No. Child, okay. Childbearing. Oh, childbearing. Oh, continue, continue. Let me know. Let, you see, you see my own. So I'm looking for my, my examples. Go ahead. When we got married and we got pregnant, you got pregnant. I don't understand no, we that. we got this pregnant. This generation, we got pre I did not get pregnant. I've never been pregnant in my life. You, when you got pregnant, yes. Okay, when I you became the pregnant. pregnancy for all. Uh -huh. Our other room matters had to suffer a lot of... Uh, heart Shipwreck. Pain. Yes. Shipwreck. But he had to understand that this was for a season. Season. Because if you don't understand season... You will, you will break a marriage that can stand. Mm -hmm. Do you get? You, you see this thing you just say. So marriage and relationship generally will take you through those, that, that process where you have to understand season. Because yeah. there's a season you'll be giving a lot. Yeah. There's a season you'll be giving less, your partner will be giving more. Mm -hmm. All right? So you need to understand your seasons. All right, number three point, and which is very connected to this seasonal issue, is that you must be patient with the process. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people just think that love relationship will just bloom and bloom and bloom overnight. It doesn't do. See, we are 13 years plus in, but man, there's still a lot of work. A lot of work. How much work do you think there is? Mm. <laughs> we are here to work. Oh, really? Yeah. You're not here to just enjoy. It comes after the harvest. Oh. But you, you are, well, you keep getting the harvest in installments. But you are here to work. I love that. Can you speak about that installment? Then the ultimate harvest. Is there actually an ultimate harvest when it comes to marriage? Because no, you, it's not an ultimate. Till you die. Harvest. Till you so die. you'll be reaping in seasons. Yes. You know the farmer, you know, keeps farming consistently. Season he doesn't to just, season. Yes, from season to season, he's there on the job farming. If not, he will be out of. Uh, oh, that's job. true because the farmer doesn't just farm for a season. Mm -hmm. Because if you meet a seasoned farmer, mm -hmm. the farmer has farmed for several seasons. Of course. And the farmer has been able to make a living from farming. Yes. That means, oh, woo, 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 that touches me. You know why? That means the fact that the farmer labored last year mm -hmm. to produce a harvest last year does not mean the farmer has rested from his labors. No. Nope. Oh, wow. You see, because you may have given a lot last year to your relationship or to your marriage. And I feel like, must I always give? If you want the harvest of the new season, then you got to sow again in the new season. So the laughter you gave last year is not enough for a new harvest this year. All right, the patience you put in last year is not enough for a new harvest this year. All right, the forgiveness you gave last year is not enough for a new harvest this year. You know, uh, in the course of our relationship, you said something that wowed me. And this has been years down the line, but this, uh, what you said still resonates in my mind. And you said that every time you wake up, you wake up every day thinking of how you can wow me. Going, con con going continuous. Yes. Continuous, progressive, and, yeah. And that gave me a wake up call. I'm like, ah, if this man is thinking every day how to wow me, how to make life good, how to invest in our love, then what am I doing? I have to step up. I have to sit up and also, you know, uh, do the same. So, but the thing is, you were thinking about doing it consistently. What is you were? I am. You are. I am still on that plane. I am a living every day. Oh, you thank are. you, Lord Jesus. Do you get what I mean? <laughs> day on to day, uttered speech, the Bible says. Even God is talking to us every day. Mm. Uh, what is new every morning? Great is thy faithfulness. 
Uh, there's something that messes. is new. Your messes, they are new every morning. Every morning. See, you cannot continue to rip love. Because sometimes some people come to this point where they act like relationships should come to the point where it's just on cruise mode. Mm -hmm. You know, every time we drive with the children, they love for us to be on cruise. I don't know what the everything cruise is. They just, I, I think sometimes they just feel like if you press that cruise, the car will just start flying or something. Every time that they pull cruise mode, pull, eh. see, relationship never comes to the point where it's just on a cruise mode. Mm -hmm. So you see, the wisdom of the farmer is I must farm from season to season. And it doesn't matter the harvest I got last season, mm. if I don't put in new effort, if I'm not patient with the process to continue to do the things I need to do, I'm not going to have a bountiful harvest this season. So a great last year is not good enough to have a great this year mm -hmm. if you don't do the things you did last year and more. Oh. All right, one more point then we are done with this video is that you must invest time, you must invest effort, you must invest resources. Mm. Three key things, time, effort, resources. Time, effort, resources. Time, effort, resources. Time, time effort, effort, resources. resources. Time, time, effort, effort resources. resources. Time, effort, resources. resources. What is time? Time is your life. Mm -hmm. See, relationships don't work when we are not working it with our lives. Mm. And that's what also, of course, of course, touches on effort. Because you see, um, life can be so busy that this woman can be in my house or in our house and still not have me. That's how busy life gets. I mean, we want to pay bills. You know, we, yeah, you know, go ahead. And, and time is not always equivalent to money. Exactly. Know? Some people feel if I can give money, then I, I don't need to give time. You need to invest time. You are here because of relationship first. Mm. And relationship takes your time. You see, I, I'll give you an example. A farmer cannot leave his field to the events of life. Mm. A farmer has to be there. It's a time thing. The farmer has to spend time. If he's not spending time, in the, in the case of farming, he's spending time through people that do the actual work. But guess what? Every good farmer knows that inspection is the live wire of the work. True. Otherwise, you just send a hireling to your field who will not do the job that you require to be done on your field. So it's so important. Yeah, go ahead. You come back to weevils. Exactly. Your farm. That's why some farmers have handed over farms to people who didn't do the job. So it requires time, requires effort and resources. Yeah. That's why you see a farmer get fertilizer or anything that aids the farm, you know, spend time, get people to work on the farm, everything he can do. Why is he doing this? Because a prime harvest, all right, would require that you put in time, effort and resources. And that's how you speak to your partner. That's how you spend on your partner. That's how you talk to your partner. That's how you go out of your way. You do so, so many things. You want to say a few things before we close the conversation? Your marriage is like your farm. Give it attention mm. and watch it bloom, watch it grow. It's not going to be easy. Like the case we mentioned about the farmer, it's not going to be easy. It's going to take a lot from you and it's going to take a lot of investing in, 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 in a lot of it, asserting yourself putting uh you know your best foot forward to make sure that you 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 give your best but keep doing it and you will consistently keep re reaping good results everybody wants a happy marriage why don't you give yourself a chance at having one you see why are we saying all these things we're saying if you don't treat your relationship or your marriage from the perspective of sowing and reaping, then you've missed the point. And that's how the Bible says we love him because he first loved us. So his love that he reaps from us is a harvest of the love he sowed. All right. If just imagine a relationship where both parties have the sowing mentality mm -hmm. to give and not just to be demanding. We really hope that this has been a blessing to you. We've been able to keep it simple and highlighted four key points you need to understand about planting and reaping love once again before we go have you subscribed to this channel have you turned on the notification bell so that when we drop our videos you will see them by the way the on the couch conversation drops every wednesday, wednesday. evening at 7 30 p.m west african time all right so you can expect every wednesday at 7 30 p.m west african time that a new episode of on the couch conversation drops all right relevant conversation necessary conversations conversations that would help you grow uh in the knowledge that you require to make your love relationships work we hope to see you again in the next episode god bless you